October is a busy month of celebrations. For some, we celebrate Halloween, but also AAC Awareness Month. AAC stands for Augmentative Alternative Communication, or as some of the women I interviewed tonight call it, their sexy robot voice. Tonight, we will meet some AAC experts who say their voices might not always be their own. I'm Erin, and this is a spooky episode titled, It's Not Me, It's My Device That's Haunted. Kelsey Hagen sat down to tell me some of her real-life spooky stories. Being an AAC user, Chelsea shared with me there's more to that cheerful smile of hers. I remember it was a gorgeous day. I was sitting under my favorite maple tree, writing a story. I recall the warm sun, out of the blue, started to beam, a radiant ray of light on my face. It was wonderful and warm, and I felt relaxed and calm. That was until I looked down at my device screen, and I saw a ghostly image of a beautiful woman staring back at me. I thought to myself, I see, dead people. I knew what I should do. I did the Chelsea Hagen trademark smile. The image smiled back at me, and as the sun went behind a cloud, the sky went dark, and just like that she disappeared. Oh, she still likes to appear on warm sunny days, right when I'm in the middle of creating one of my stories, but she is always so kind and beautiful, so I'm not scared of her. Oh, I know that people think that my smile is because I am a cheerful person, but I smile so the ghost will continue to be happy. You know the saying, a happy device makes for a happy life. Bailey Nalecki shared with us a spooky time when her ghosts almost cost her a summer of terrible summer school. It was an ordinary day at school. I was getting ready to take a really important test in history. I said to my friend, Marley, this test is half of our grade. She replied, oh, man, I know, hopefully nothing supernatural happens. I said, you read too many scary books, nothing is going to happen. The only thing that would scare me is failing the test and going to summer school. Boy, was I wrong that day, because everything was about to take an evil turn. Mr. Pilly said, it's time to get started, everybody ready. Then out of the blue, my AAC device froze, on purpose. It was like it was laughing at me and saying, you poor unfortunate soul, no summer fun for you, Bailey, just hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work you go. I thought to myself, oh no, the ghost is back. What should I do? First I told myself to remain calm, and remember you are the fairest of them all, and then second is, tell Mr. Pilly. So, I did, and he said, this ghost has perfect timing. I knew there was only one thing to do. Get my aid to shut down my device and do a restart. And because the ghost was so ugly and cruel, I didn't even say goodbye. I whispered to the ghost to infinity and beyond. I looked at my aid and said, do it. It worked. No summer school for me. We've heard about the device having a mind of its own, but is it possible for other things to control an AAC device? Pets, for example. Here's Joanne Picard with her interesting AAC encounter. It was a brisk September day. I decided to tackle my school reading at a local coffee shop, you know to try and trick my brain into thinking that the history of capitalism was not as tortuous as a final destination death. My seizure alert dog resting on my lap 
occasionally waking herself up with her loud snores. Although the coffee shop was fairly busy, I had tuned out the low hum of people conversing when suddenly something stopped Adam Smith in his tracks. I suddenly heard this deep, intense, bad as rapper-like voice, a voice I heard thousands of times before. I knew that voice, that was me. My eyes weren't looking at my AAC device. They were looking at my soul-crushing history textbook. I looked down to see my dog, Pippet, wide awake, staring at my AAC screen. It wasn't me asking for a drink. It was my dog. I mean, I was thankful she at least didn't say something like, Hell, I'm going to eat your heart. All three women shared a time when it seemed they were not in control of their AAC systems. Here are some of their spooky stories. This one time at AAC camp. My device became haunted. I was trying to give a lovely speech and it just stopped talking. So I restarted it and there still wasn't a voice. I started to panic. I felt sick to my stomach. I felt a spooky presence. I thought to myself, they are here. I knew there was a ghost lurking inside my device. It was just waiting to ruin my presentation. So I first tried to restart and nothing. But now it was saying that it was updating. I could feel my beating heart creeping up my throat. I felt like I was being suffocated by the Boston Strangler. I waited until it was done updating. I still had no voice. So, I did a full shutdown. Hey, I was not going to play with this ghost. As my device began to come back to life, I had pearls of cold sweat running down my neck. In my mind, I was repeatedly saying, by the power of all my good karma, cast this evil spirit out from inside my device. And when I scanned my device, my voice was back, and I had won. I typed on my screen, this device is clean. Score one for the communicator and zero for the evil entity. It was a dark and stormy night. I was texting with Tabitha. Little did I know, my AAC device had other evil plans. I went to the bathroom, and when I got back, Tabitha said, Why are you saying these crazy things? I replied, But I didn't. I was in the bathroom. Tabitha said, Maybe it is a ghost. I replied, There is no such thing, Tabitha. Then it happened. The mouse started moving. I said, what is going on? Then the mouse pointer was flying all over the screen. Then it got really spooky, because I am sure, I heard it say, it's my turn to talk, and call somebody, to scare you Bailey, ma ha ha ha. I couldn't believe it, Tabitha was right. I thought to myself, how do I get in contact with somebody who can save me from my AAC device? I said, Wait a minute, I just need to restart it. I knew it wouldn't be that easy because the mouse would fight back. Then I whispered, come on Bailey, you are not scared of some dumb mouse. So, I plugged in my switch, and said, it's time to kill a mouse. I pushed my switch and said, enough games, let's order some cheese for killing. Now, let's restart this thing. So. I went to the page with the restart. Again, as the evil mouse was zooming all over my screen, I am sure it sounded like it let out a frightful cry. No, please don't. I love you, Bailey. I said, come on. You think I believe that, really? It's time for you to say goodbye. I pushed restart, and then the mouse was gone forever. Okay, not forever. The possessed mouse still shows up from time to time, but now I know how to control the little devil. 
I was taking a well-deserved break with some ZZZs when suddenly I heard my voice say it needed to talk to Father Jim. It seems my device knew it needed to evict its demons and contact Father Jim to perform an exorcism. The demons in my device tried to revolt by yelling, not, don't, need, JK. Of course, I knew I needed to take matters into my own hands. Without the demons knowing, I chugged back some holy wine and did some research. I called my favorite priest to ask what I should do. Father Jim knew how important my device was to me. He helped me say a prayer to the technology gods, and then I performed a hard reset. As my screen turned a deep shade of black, becoming speechless and lifeless, I knew it was working. After a grueling ten-minute wait, I turned it back on to see a bright, rich screen of green and silver. I hesitantly stared for a moment at my device. It remained silent. It had worked, at least for now. As assistive technology speech-language pathologist Bruce will share with us, Device users themselves are not the only ones having these spooky encounters. Spooky. It's that uncommon experience that is common to all of us. I mean, we feel it. We sense it. It's that thing that we perceive without proof. The thing we know without knowing. It's that ghostly encounter we call spooky. Well, listen, and I will tell you a story of what happened to me one day that was spooky. It was an early morning, a dark and, well, not necessarily stormy, but it was still a dark kind of a morning. And it was deserted in the basement level of the Assistive Technology Center. I was the first to arrive, so I took out my many keys, which would turn the tumblers of the center's locked and barred doors. I entered cautiously into the reception area at the moment, it was unlit, and it was kind of unwelcoming. It was a grim time of day. Slowly I turned, step by step, towards the workroom door. Here the AAC devices that we have are lining the shelves, all of them in a tangled mass of cables and chargers plugged into outlets, electrical outlets to provide them the power that they would need to keep them alive. At least up to four to six hours, you know, depending on how much you use it. But for now, the AAC devices were merely asleep or turned off. But they certainly were not dead. Fitting the key into the workroom door, I paused. What was that? What did I hear? A murmur? A voice? Inwardly, I was alarmed, and I stepped into I know not what. Once I was in the workroom, I hear the repetition of a single message, and it sent chills down my spine. It said, I'm hungry, give me something to eat. I'm hungry, give me something to eat. Over and over again, one of the devices had taken on a life of its own, yeah, emanating from its acapella Ryan voice that's what it did it demanded I'm hungry give me something to eat I'm hungry give me something to eat the illuminated touch screen kind of shone its ghastly artificial glow the voice the light the message just what did that device want was it seeking what did it want to eat was it seeking out me Well, if you were confronted with the inexplicable fact of an AAC device relentlessly demanding of you, I'm hungry, give me something to eat, what would you think? And especially if you were alone in a dark place. You can call it chance, maybe coincidence that something touched the screen overnight and made it speak. But to me, that talking device was and forever will remain.
Okay. As Chelsea shares, not always are these ghostly encounters spooky. Sometimes they're slightly embarrassing, humorous, or maybe a bit mean-spirited. Sometimes the ghosts will try to make me sound less intelligent, and that makes me feel so sad that tears roll down my face. Did you hear that? The ghosts did that. I don't have crimson blood gushing cuts on my creamy smooth face. What I was trying to say is I have a salty waterfall running down my sad face. This ghost is so horrible. A while back, I asked when is the shift change, meaning when does my next caregiver start work? But instead, as you just heard the ghost blurted out, the nasty word for poop. I remember the words rolling around and around in my mind. They're all going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. And of course everyone did. I sighed in annoyance, cursed under my breath. I knew the ghost was smirking at me, pulling on my heartstrings. I just wanted to scream, bloody hell. Why does this spirit have to be such a bully? I try not to keep score, but I always lose at this poltergeist type activity. One for the ghost and zero for the communicator. We've heard from AAC users and AAC specialists. So what do the AAC creators have to say for themselves? Will they deny these spooky encounters? I had a chance to do an off-camera interview with someone who works inside these companies. I'm a technician with an AAC company here in, um, well... I guess we can say the world. We have some AAC users say their device has a mind of its own. I've just heard too many stories from too many people not to believe them. My company tells me to deny it, says it can't be responsible for spooknickel difficulties. You ever feel prickly things on the back of your neck? I have seen firsthand someone's eye gaze device talking without them in the room, eerily asking for a pumpkin spice latte. A device shouting without anyone in the room. I guess, what's the good of being a ghost if you can't frighten people away? I think they say, if I cannot inspire love, I will cause fear. Thank you for watching our spooky episode of It's Not Me, It's My Device That's Haunted. We hope these spooky AAC stories based on true events do not haunt you too late into the night. Have a fun and exciting AAC month and Halloween with hopefully few spooknickel difficulties.